I'm going to talk about a couple of approaches we use to improve vehicle routing metaheuristics by mining frequent paths. So to start, I'm going to talk about pattern mining in the combinatorial optimization field. First of all, why is pattern mining? Uh, to answer this question, I'm going to use a, a classic anecdotal example from the data science field, which you may know as the beer and diapers. So basically, we have a data set which is composed of transactions, which are simply sets of items from the application domain. Uh, in this case, they are items that, that are bought by a customer in a supermarket. And the goal is to find subsets of items that frequently appear together in this data set. And what is frequent? Uh, it's usually defined by a user threshold. So in this example, if we define a threshold of 75%, we would find this weird pattern uh, relating beer and diapers that are usually bought together. So this is pattern mining. Uh, we, we use uh, the FPMAX star algorithm to, to mine maximal frequent item sets. And uh, I, I published uh, a C++ library uh, with an implementation of this method uh, with a simple interface that you can uh, include in your project and with like 10 lines of code use this method. But how can, I, can we apply this in combinatorial optimization? Well, the idea here is to mine frequent, frequent patterns from a set of high quality solution to the instance at hand. So in the case of VRPs, the basic items that compose a solution are edges. So when we mine patterns from a set of VRP solutions, we obtain a, a set of items that frequently appear together in those solutions. And of course, we can connect some edges. Uh, so we, what we have are frequent paths. So paths that frequently appear together in the solutions. Since, since we mine these patterns from, uh, from a set of high quality solutions, there's a high probability that those paths also uh, appear together in other suboptimal or even optimal solutions to the same instance. So of course, this information can be useful in metaheuristics in several ways. And I'm going to talk about two approaches we've used uh, to improve vehicle routing metaheuristics. The first is called multi-data mining. It, it is the simplest method we used with VRPs. It was designed to work with multi-start metaheuristics which have this simple framework. It's a iterative framework with two basic steps, two basic components, an initial solution generator and a local search. Uh, a good example of this is GRASP, uh, but of course we can, it's usual to replace this local search component with an ILS or a taboo search and so on. So in the MDM approach, we keep an elite set with the best solutions found through all iterations. And at some point, when we consider this elite set is stable, which means it was unchanged for a certain amount of time, we mine patterns from it. And we start using those patterns in initial solution generation by simply inserting the patterns in the initial solutions. So this is a, a simple method. Well, we, we first applied this method to the heterogeneous fleet VRP uh, using a multi-start ILS as baseline method, which was a competitive method by the time we started working in, in this problem. And in this variant, we have uh, vehicle types with different capacities and different usage costs. So uh, each route in a solution is assigned a specific vehicle type, and this is a very important decision in this variant. So we capture that information in the paths in the mining, pa in the mining patterns. So each, each frequent path we mine is assigned a specific vehicle type, and you, we use that information, of course. 
So how we, init we initialize a solution based on a pattern? So we start by the frequent paths, then we, we initialize a route for each path, and then we just complete the solution using whatever strategy the original method uses. Well, uh, summarizing the results we, we achieved with this method, we achieved better solution quality, faster convergence, and it found six new upper bounds in the DLP bench benchmark, and these results are published in this article here. Then we, we applied the same, the same strategy for the CVRP using HGS as the baseline. And of course, I, I could never uh, compete with Bauter for the, the best HGS representation, so I didn't even try. So here's my HGS representation, a plain boring representation, but with the components that we wish to focus on. Uh, we have an initial solution generation, uh, a black box with a hybrid evolutionary framework that produces an offspring, and we, s we just insert this offspring in the population, and we have some iterations between these two components, and eventually we just restart the population from scratch. So this is kind of a multi-start method as well. So we could apply the same approach, uh, pretty much the same way. We update an elite set every time you search a new solution in the population. When this elite set is stable, we mine patterns. And here's the, the main difference. Uh, since, since this is an evolu evolutionary method, population diversity is very important. So we keep the original initialization, initialization method uh, for generating part of the initial population. And we introduce a new initialization method that uses patterns, introduces the, those patterns in the, in the initial individuals, and complete the solutions using a randomized Clark and Wright heuristic. Uh, this method earned the second place in the CVRP track of the Dimex challenge, and first place for some classes. The results were very tight, and these were very good results, I think. And the source code is also available at my GitHub. And after my presentation in the, in the challenge workshop, I was asked this interesting question. How large are those patterns? Do we, can we obtain those results with small patterns? Do we need large patterns? So here are the, the disinformation for the X instances. Uh, here we have the, in, on the left the pattern size. Uh, it's a relative number of customers in relation to the total number of the instance. Uh, and we can see that there's a, uh, a trend that the pattern size increases, the relative pattern size increases as the instance size increases. And for the, for the smallest instances, we have an average pattern size between 15 and 20% of the customers in the instance but it grows up to about 70% for the largest instances, so our pretty large patterns. And on the right, we have the, the, the size of the frequent paths on those patterns. Uh, on blue, we have the average size, and on red, we have the longest path size. So the, the average is uh, about in, in between 5 and 10% on average. And the longest, but the longest path, uh, we have some pretty long paths with a peak of 45 customers for instances between 400 and 600 customers. So this is, this concludes the, the presentation of the MDM approach. So the next approach is called Mind Reduce. This is a new approach proposed in my, in my PhD thesis where we we took a step further in the usage of patterns, and we use patterns for problem decomposition. So we, now we take a pattern, since we, we, we have this information that those, the, those items, those elements in a pattern, uh, probably 
uh, must be present in suboptimal or even optimal solutions, we can temporarily fix that, the, those items in the solution. And by doing so, we have uh, a reduction operation that uh, produces a reduced size version of the original instance. Then we solve the reduced instance and finally expand the solution, which means reversing the reduction operation so we obtain a, a, a solution to the original instance. And the idea is to use the solution as a starting point for a search on the original search space. So we also applied this approach to, to the HFERP. So we start by uh, generating an elite set of high quality solutions and we mine patterns from it. And then we apply the reduction operation, which in this case is a contraction of the frequent paths into single vertices in the reduced instance. So then we have uh, a reduced version of the problem. We solve this reduced problem, then expand that solution by reversing the reduction operation. So and we start the search on the original search space from this solution. So some important points when designing the reduction X and expansion operators are that we wish to keep feasibility and this is guaranteed since we mine frequent, frequent item sets from a set of feasible solutions. So feasibility is guaranteed in this case. Uh, we wish to keep optimality, but of course we cannot guarantee that since we have, we have taken heuristic decisions when we fixed the, pat the pattern in the solution. But hopefully, if the patterns are really good, we can keep optimality. And those last points are very important. We wish to keep order relation, which means if, if solution A is cheaper than solution B for the reduced instance, we wish that uh, the expanded solutions keep that order relation. Otherwise, it would be pointless to do such decomposition. Uh, and finally, we wish to minimize interventions in the baseline method. So here's uh, in more detail how do we do the contraction of a frequent path into a single vertex. Uh, and to, so, uh, we handle uh, asymmetric instances, so here we, we, we actually mine a directed, path, directed paths instead of uh, paths composed by edges. So they are composed by arcs. Uh, we, we have added uh, an attribute to customers. Here we have the demand, and we have a second attribute, which is the inner path length, which is the way we, the, the strategy we adopted to, to handle this requirement of keeping order relation. And of course, the inner path length in the customers from the original instance is zero. There is no inner path. So we contract this, this frequent path into a single vertex, and the demand of the contracted vertex is the sum of the demands in the customers in the, in the corresponding path. And the inner path length is the path, is the length of the, the frequent path, of course. That's direct. So with this approach, we achieved significantly better solution quality than the baseline and the MDM approach. It is even faster than MDM and very competitive with other state-of-the-art methods. It found 22 new upper bounds out of 96 instances in the DLP benchmark set. And the results are published in this article in Computers and Operations Research. Now, since we applied both MDM and mine reduced to the HFERP, we can do a comparison between the baseline MDM and mine reduced. So this is a, a table summarizing the numerical results per instance subset and the, this, this, the subsets are in increasing order of instance size. And we can see that mine reduce dominates the whole thing. Uh, it achieves best, best cost 
uh, for most of the of the instances and best average time for all instances with an average reduction in time of 60 percent now the next slides in the next slides i will present some charts that we use to further analyze the behavior of those metheuristics of those methods in comparison so in this in this first slide we have uh, plotted the solution cost per iteration for each method. In blue, we have the initial solution cost. In red, we have the local optimum cost. And we can see in the baseline method, we have, oh, sorry, we have some uh, random variation only because the, the method is memoryless. So we have only random variation in the same range all the time. In the MDM, we have those dashed lines which mark the moments where pattern mine was applied and we started using new patterns in solution generation. So we can see there's an improvement in initial solution costs every time you mine patterns and starting, you start using them. And these, these improvements are, are reflected in the local optimal cost. And uh, it, the costs are further and further improved every time we, we mine new patterns. Now in mine reduce, we have pretty much the same, the same observation, but the difference is the, the cost drop is absolutely huge. The, generations, the generation costs is, is the initial solution costs are very, very low, of course, because we include in the initial solution generation a search, a valor search in, uh, in the reduced uh, search space for the reduced instances. So we, we well, for, from these results, we can conclude that the patterns are actually pretty good because we obtain uh, very good solutions from the, the reduced search space. But we can also observe that we can still improve those solutions a little bit in the local search on the original solution space. And those improvements, uh, we, we, we continue to have further and further improvements uh, while we mine new patterns and the, the pattern set is refined throughout the execution of the method. Now we have the plots of running times per iteration. Again, we have random variation for the baseline. Uh, for MDM, we have we can observe a slight reduction in running time as we as we mine patterns. And in okay, for both methods, the generation running time is almost zero. There's a, a blue line here in, in the axis. And in mind reduce, the generation time, running time, of course, increases because we do uh, a search on a reduced search space. But this, this increase in generation time is compensated by a huge reduction in the local search time for the original search space. And the time is reduced every time we mine new patterns. And here we have a time to target plot uh, where we run each method a hundred times in the same instance uh, until we reach some target cost. And we use the data to, to uh, estimate the probability that a method will reach the target within a time limit. And we can observe that uh, all methods have the same behavior for short, short periods of time because that is the time that, takes, that it takes to the elite set to become stable and we mine patterns and start, start using patterns in the MDM and mine reduce approaches. So from this point, we can see that MDM starts converging faster than the baseline and mine reduce converges faster than both. So to conclude, uh, I'm going to present some perspectives. 
from the results of the CVRP track in the DIMAX challenge, we could see a pretty much clear separation with HGS-based methods dominating the rankings for, from, for small to medium instances, and ILS-based methods dominating the rankings for medium to large ones like Philo AILS. And we saw that FHC Silver won the, this track using a strategy uh, for selecting the best algorithm between HS, Philo, or a combination of both based on instance size. So we could use MindReduce to orchestrate a set of state-of-the-art methods and apply them to solve large-scale instances. For example, using an ILS-based method to build an elite set then using MDMHS to solve some problems and returning the solutions to the ILS-based one. And if a subproblem is small enough, we could even uh, solve it optimally using VRP solver, for example. So here are the references of my presentation. That's all. Thank you for your attention. Uh, doing path link between two solutions in the elite set, what you're doing is fixing the common common patterns and then exploring the, the, the space generated by these two solutions where you fix these. What is the main difference between those, those two methods? Well, uh, that's a good question. <laughs> uh, I think the main difference is in the way we, we obtain those, those similarities between the, the two solutions, or in this case, or in this, uh, between among those solutions in the elite set. But we, we, we should obviously compare mind reduce with path linking more in depth to look at w which similarities we obtain from both methods. If are, they are the same, if they are different, we didn't do, do that yet, but that's an interesting. Uh, you path. also use it in the, in the generation of the initial solution. Yeah, is, yeah. Thank you. I was wondering if, if we think back to Andrea's talk on Monday, if there's some connections there. I mean, the problem setting he proposed seems like it'd be really good for this sort of pattern mining. Yeah, yeah. I, I was thinking about that when I saw his presentation. Yeah, the, the main difference here is we, uh, here we, we, are, uh, we mine patterns from a, a set of solutions for the same instance, and he was uh, doing this pretty much the same thing for uh, solutions for slightly different instances. Uh, and um, uh, uh, another difference I noted is that he he estimated the probability that an edge individually is in a solution. We, in, on the other hand, we take. Uh, we, we find frequent sets of items that appear together. So he had a problem with feasibility that he had to, to fix the solution afterwards if, if it was infeasible. We don't have this problem because we, we guarantee feasibility through the method we use to, to mine patterns. that we be able to improve the GS. Uh, but I think we talked a little about uh, the data mining itself. So how the, the, this data mining works? Uh, it's a simple frequency count to something more sophisticated? Uh, the, the, we use the FMAX star algorithm, which is, uh, uh, it, which is a two decades algorithm. It's the best algorithm they have in the data science field for this task. It mines maximal frequent item sets. It doesn't scale well. That's, a, that's a, an issue. So we usually control that by keeping the elite set small. We usually work with at most 10, 15 solutions in the elite set. So it doesn't explode in, co in complexity because the, the input is very small. 
is not as Andrea is doing offline. You are doing the, in the middle of the for the same instance and in in that competition the running times were very crucial. You should obtain good services very quickly in order to be competitive and you still could do a, a data mining uh, in that context in the fly. Yeah, we have we have an overhead for the, the running time of the data mine, but this is compensated by the gains. The, the patterns generate afterwards. Yeah. In, uh, in the work we did, I know that you know quite well, we also tried pattern mining, uh, but try to include the patterns to generate high order neighborhoods uh, in a local search. Have you considered using pattern mining outside the scope of construction to try to guide other parts of the search? Absolutely, that's, uh, that's an interesting way of using patterns. Uh, there are several possibilities we can think of, of how to use those infor that, that information encoded by the patterns. Uh, that's an interesting one. I, I read that paper. It's very interesting. Okay, any other questions? Thank you very much. Thank you.